that we're assuming we would finance that next year with uh, long-term debt. And then uh, you see the uh, debt payment going for the, on the second line from 883 to 1.3 million. Okay. That, that's that additional $5 million. So, okay, good. Um, is that reflected, uh, uh, reflective of any kind of annual equipment expenses that we should anticipate with this program? Will or? there be, are there additional annual equipment expenses? Um, yes, there are. And it's not included in any and of this. They're not included there. Um, in 2014, I, I, and Mr. Lynch is here, we, we do have warranty for one year, and so our equipment expenses are minimal th th this first year, although we have an agreement with the Board of Public Utilities on the maintenance of equipment that's going to add um, potentially uh, – Two hundred thousand dollars on on equipment maintenance, and then in 2015, uh, we'll have an additional equipment related expense with Motorola, as it relates once we're we're beyond the warranty period. Lou, I believe there's also an operational issue in terms of the the staffing to support uh, the equipment, and BPU's proposing that there be additional staffing available to to keep the system up and running and we have for a, a very short point just that will be coming to you as a part of consideration in the operations of, of the system later this summer yes your your, <clears throat> your comments about this and and maybe I'm the only commissioner that it was recently an acquaintance of mine commented to me that uh, there is a scarcity of Kansas City, Kansas Board of Public Utility bonds available to buy on the market. And number one, I don't understand why that would be when they're available. But secondly, I would like, and maybe this is something you put on one of these future meetings or I could meet with Lou if nobody else is in interested. I would like to know how we are currently selling our bonded indebtedness and how that process works from top to bottom on distribution. I mean, it makes no difference to me because I won't be buying bonds anyway, but apparently this guy thought our bonds were pretty good investments and the story I kind of got was that when we put mar bonds out on the market, they're all bought up by Big East and West Coast investors, and you can't find a Kansas City, Kansas bond in Kansas, or it's very difficult. So yeah. I just want FY, just information. But it ties into this only because we're going to be issuing debt, and so I assume the same East and West Coast major investors will probably snap these up if what he told me was accurate, and I don't know that it is. Yeah. I, d I think that may be an accurate representation on the Kansas City, Kansas side. When we issue debt for the Board of Public Utilities, we, we use underwriting firms, and we try to involve uh, several firms as it, um, in the process selecting a senior manager and then co-managers, and we really look for uh, the co-managers we, we try to make certain we have the involvement of local firms, and the local firms might be Kansas City regional firms, that, that there would be more of that opportunity for local orders. Well, our, but we don't do that on our bonds? Just our, our bonds we sell through a competitive bid, and so we're, we're – um, and, and there might be local firms involved in, in the bidding. Some of the, sometimes on some of the smaller issues, we might have bids, for example, from UMB Bank or Country Club Bank, but uh, it's generally larger firms that might have a consortium of bidders that bid. But, but that's an interesting question, and I, and I can talk with uh, our, our financial advisor and, and explore where, where those opportunities might exist. Okay, thank you. I mean, he didn't ask me to find him any bonds or anything. It just, I, I couldn't answer the question why you can't buy a Kansas City, Kansas bond. Okay. I'm 
glad to hear they're so marketable, but you would think in Kansas you ought to be able to buy a Kansas City, Kansas farm. It would be worse if you couldn't sell them, yes? Yeah, no, of course, of course. <laughs> okay, um, anything else on the radio system? I think, um, I think we've covered it. Um, Mr. Hayes, you have an additional uh, final item. And I'll do this very briefly. I think it's important that the commission be aware. I, and I contemplated what's the easiest way to, I'm going to simply read you a letter that went to 16 candidates for the fire department earlier this week. While we were actively looking forward to starting our 2014 Fire Recruit Academy in the next couple of weeks, we regret to inform you that as a result of budgetary constraints, we must postpone the start date of this class. At this point, we are not certain when we'll be able to move forward with the Academy class. However, we will provide you with an update within the next 60 days regarding the status. This is a letter of a point postponement. It came as a result of recommendation from Lou Levin. He's been looking at end of the year numbers. They're not rosy. There's some real challenges. So we quickly looked at those areas where we could control and contain cost immediately. We had anticipated a number of retirements at the end of the year in fire service. Those did not happen. So based upon Lou's recommendation, based upon the fact that we didn't receive the number of retirements that we had hoped, we actually don't have funding in the 2014 budget for these positions. We are expecting, and Chief Jones has indicated that he's expecting a number of retirements at the end of the first quarter, so that's why we set this 60-day date. Also, from the police side, we have over 20 vacant positions today. And we were in the process of preparing to offer conditional offers of employment uh, to candidates in the very near future. Because we're close on budget and because we haven't been able to advance to you yet end of the year numbers to see how challenging the situation is, uh, we're going to back off of that. We're not going to move forward to issue those conditional offers of employment at this time. But that's something we can quickly restore. But we want to make sure we get good information to the commission um, in the month of February so you can give us, and your calendar indicates uh, that you provide budget priorities in the month of March to the new administrator. So hopefully between now and then we'll get you information. You can, can make decisions uh, regarding trying to balance the need in public safety. Did we have the number of retirements come through that we're hoping in, in fire? Uh, but it was a decision I felt as administrator I needed to make and get these letters out because these people were going to go to work in a couple of weeks. And we didn't want to hold off. I wanted to get the letters out in fairness to them. I would really uh, wish we could have gotten them out sooner. But I did want to make you aware of this tonight. Uh, I've also sent an email to Commissioner Townsend and Commissioner Kane to make them aware um, of this course of action that we've taken this week. All right. So I, did you send that out before you brought it to the full commission? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, this is... Did you have consensus on um, deciding to push it back for 60 days? Did you have consensus on deciding from to push home. back the fire from the commission? No, ma'am. Okay. This is a personnel matter, okay. budgetary matter, and as county administrator, I'm required to make those type of decisions. Okay. Now, it comes to you as commission in terms of the budget. If you want to adjust the budget and add more money to the fire department budget so that we can fund these positions in the near future or we have the retirements, hopefully it won't come down to that and we can fill the positions. But given, given the, the seriousness of what Lou is concerned about at the end of the year, the other financial issues that we're wrestling with, uh, one of the requirements of the charter is that, that the county administrator make decisions regarding personnel. I wanted to bring this to you tonight, let you know that I had taken these actions, and this will be on your agenda uh, to make decisions regarding the budget, Commissioner. All right. May I speak? Yeah. My objection is that, not that the decision was made, but we were informed tonight. Actually, I got informed with an early morning phone call from a constituent extremely unhappy with me, and I knew nothing about it. And I'm sure that he thought I had my head somewhere where it shouldn't be. Because how could it be that this decision is made and I'm not, I didn't know about it. 
My objection is those letters were sent to those cadets before we were informed. And I was caught looking stupid. Now, I couldn't have much addressed beyond what you just said, but I had no idea what to even tell him as to why this had happened. So, while it may have been your decision, I think it would be beneficial for the, for the county administrator or who makes these decisions to give us a heads up before the letters go out. I mean, I don't disagree with the decision, but I, f I felt pretty stupid and foolish talking to this guy, and he must have thought me pretty stupid and foolish for not knowing anything about it. If I may, Mayor, in retrospect, Commissioner, you're absolutely right. Um, one of our goals is not to surprise the commission. This came to you as a surprise earlier in the week, and in retrospect, uh, as we were putting these letters together, we should have alerted the commission at that time. So uh, I regret we didn't get notice out to you and that you were surprised by this matter, but honestly, I, I had asked the mayor for opportunity tonight to share this with you. I'm sorry you were surprised by 48 hours. I regret that. Our goal is to keep you informed and that you're not surprised. But given the, the financial circumstances, given the fairness to these candidates, I thought making the decision and getting the letter out was in their best interest to move forward on that. My failure was not to inform the commission at the time that I made the decision on the letter. Okay. All right. There are no further items on our agenda. We are adjourned.